Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Choctaw. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Choctaw Experience. Of course, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, and about eight others. Also on our YouTube channel, KJI Yellowjackets.tv. With me, as always, is the Mr. Bass, and of course, I am the Mr. Crowder. How are you doing? Good. How's things going with you? They're going great. We got a, a lot of exciting things going on. Um, yeah, it's a big week. Big week. District play. Yep. Um, last week we're coming off of a loss, which a lot of us have been sitting around talking about probably a good thing that we lost lost because there's a lot more learning to do when you lose, and then you get motivated to not do that again because yeah, it, it, exactly, it's not, exactly. not good. Of course, it was a rainy, rainy day uh, last Friday. Yeah, it's tough, tough uh, weather. You know, it's homecoming, very distracting, so it's yeah, good focus this week, and so we're happy about that. Of course, uh, you know, the fr- the freshman volleyball team is rolling. They're doing really good. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they've lost a set. I don't think so. Um, the, you know, the volleyball team's hanging in there. Yeah, yeah, they're, I think, 17th in the state right now. So. Pretty, pretty good, pretty yeah. good. Softball team is uh, – is Yeah, they're sitting in a nice third, third place in their district, which – uh, depending on how things go, that's it's up with them and Tulsa Union. They are so close neck and neck that uh, that could flip and we could jump ahead and get to host. But as of right now, it looks like we're solid third. I don't. We're not going to lose third place. Right, right. So that's. I mean, it's a pretty good place to be. You're not the hunted, but you're right in there with uh, everybody else. So that's yeah. that's good. Okay, on this show, of course, we got your question of the day. We'll get to that later. We're also adding a new segment. Um, we're gonna we've we've uh, assigned brackets to all the mascots, not the teams, the, the mascots. mascots in six A two in six A two six A two. And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna basically break that down for you every week and just kind of uh, have a, have a little roundtable discussion with Mister Johnson. And so that's coming up. We're gonna kind of break down what we're looking at. Um, as far as how to look at the football season, because it really starts Friday. Yeah, everything's Friday. So um, that's what's going on. And so we're also going to have a coach's show, but a a special kind of coach's show. We're going to have the regular coach's show, and then we're going to have a special kind of coach's show. And I think they're they're called – what what are they they called? Um, They're not not athletes. They're – Mathletes? (laughs) <laughs> no, th- that's just one subject. Oh, okay, okay. Um, academic leads? What, what would that be? Academias. A- academias? Yeah, there you go. All right, with us here is Coach Sindal. Yep, talk about the academic team. They're in full swing. We are. So how are things going out there? Really well. We've played two weeks of conference play so far, and my varsity team is 5-1. and one, Nice. And my JV team is 2-3, and three, which I'm really proud of because I have a lot of new kids who have yeah. never played before. So yeah. Yeah. it takes a little time to get into the swing of things. But, um, yeah, I would definitely call them – Mathletes, in a sense, <laughs> or some kind of academic leets, whatever you want to call them. They're actually in my room right now working because yeah. on Thursdays we have study practice. So they come in on Thursdays after school and just pick a way to input information into their head. They, right. There's a lot of websites that they use. They make flashcards. They study with each other. So they just have a lot of fun. And how many, how many kids, especially those people that don't, don't know, for a varsity competition, how many people – can compete at one time so there are four students that's it at a time so each school has a team of four and you play with a lockout buzzer system so um, each team each player on each team has a handheld buzzer uh, with a clicker and if they buzz in they lock everyone else out of the system and they have a chance to answer first if they get it right great our team gets points if they get it wrong then if there's still time on the 10 second clock the other team still has a chance to answer and get those points. Uh, okay. so, so, yeah. So, so it sounds kind of like a Jeopardy style, but with four people per team and, and you know, I guess you don't have to answer in questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a little bit of Jeopardy style. So I, I, you know, and that you'll see that a lot on teams. You'll have one or two kids that do the bulk of the question answering. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you just have those kids that are, 
you know, they might get one question every third or fourth game yeah. that's something that they just really yeah, they're, know. They're specific. Right. Quality. So you got you, you basically got your core player and then yes. you got some of your specially players yes. that fill in the gaps. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They've actually changed the rules in the last couple of years. So we play four quarters. So we, we're set up a little bit like a, a sporting event, but yeah. it's just we don't do sports. And so it, is it is it any kind of uh, – I'm going to say categories per se, like Jeopardy, but like. Yes. So our questions cover all core curriculum areas. Okay. Plus we do current events. We do pop culture. Oh, okay. And then, so we have two, two of our four quarters are what they call toss up questions. Okay. There are 20 questions in each of those rounds and they literally are toss up, which means anybody can answer. Then the other two quarters are what we call lightning round questions. So lightning round questions are in a specific category. And the kids get a little bit of a hint as yeah. to what those categories may be. And they've changed the rules in the last few years where both teams get to hear um, kind of a teaser for what the lightning round categories are. And once you've heard the teaser category, you can actually substitute at that point. So let's say you were to hear a, a category that maybe is something to do with the periodic table and you have a kid who's a whiz at the periodic table but he's not currently in the game you would have 10 seconds to sub him into the game oh, okay. that's no guarantee that you will get that lightning round category but right. by being able to substitute by hearing the teaser categories um, you have a maybe yeah, a better chance a and yeah. then you hear a specific so beyond the teaser category then you know specifically oh it's going to be um, like Lewis dot diagram structures or something uh, yeah. a very specific to the periodic table so it they have changed the rules up OSSAA we have a um, oh good gravy I can't think of it um, a committee like an oversight committee and oh, there are yeah, coaches yeah, yeah, on yeah, it yeah, as yeah. well as OSSAA people and they kind of chit chat every year several times during the school year and look at things and then we have a coaches clinic in the fall and we sort of bring things to that that then our representatives can go to the advisory board is what it is and they have those discussions so we we have changed the rules a little bit year to year this was the first year in, in several years that yeah. we didn't have any major rule changes okay. to our form Format. Yeah. Okay. Now, do they they have assigned positions? Like, do they have pos pos position? I names? have a I have a captain on okay. each okay. team. Yeah. So, um, my current captain is a senior who's played on varsity all four years of high school, which is a little unusual. It's it's pretty tip uh, atypical for a freshman to make right, varsity. Right. Um, he's just a particularly outstanding player, and that you know happens once every few years. I have a kid that's good enough to do that, and. He is kind of my wheels on the ground when I'm not in the room. At our conference matches, I don't really get to coach a lot. Uh, our right. conference is small. We have eight teams, and generally the coaches end up reading in a room all night. They read games to the players, and we don't always get to follow our teams around right. and coach. Uh, right. And so I only re so when I'm not in there, I trust him to – be able to sub and kind of know what people's strengths are yeah. and he's very experienced he played in middle school and high school both all through high school yeah that's that, that does definitely seem to be what plagues fine arts in a lot of the uh non-athletic mm -hmm. competitions where all the coaches end up being or directors yes. end judges. up being the judges or yeah. the yeah. yes yeah. so that's yeah well it's interesting you should say that because i've i've heard numerous times this fall that oklahoma is so not only are we having trouble finding judges in, in the fine arts areas and, and non-athletic events, but even the athletic events, we're having a hard time finding referees because people aren't doing that anymore. And then right. the number one reason is the fans. Yeah. So yeah, they I take so much abuse from the fans I that they don't want to be referees, and which, I mean, I don't really blame them. But it, that is a problem across the board in, in non-athletic non events. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've always blamed good eye care, but <laughs> maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the reason. Um. I mean, the, I don't think there's any amount of money. Having been a former athlete myself, I don't think there's any amount of money you could have paid me or still currently pay me to be a referee in yeah, an athletic yeah. event. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no and maybe at the, you know, the four-year-old level. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but I don't know. But that's I think sometimes worst. those parents are the worst. Yeah. So. I, 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 did, I did that once, four-year-old soccer, because it was just like, yeah, so from, it was just fine because the, the whole goal was to keep him from crying. <laughs> yeah, and then it, or it, picking uh, daisies, bugs wow. out of the grass. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> there there was one game that a butterfly threw a, flew across the field, and everybody <laughs> left, and everybody just standing around going. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think game's over. Um, yeah. Now, so, when's your next competition? Okay, so we play um, a week from today is our okay. next conference match. And then we our conference schedule is a, is a little wonky. We have to work around all eight schools and their, their school schedules. And so our goal is to play every two weeks through the fall. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. So in October, we play two weeks in a row, and then we don't play again until November. So it's kind of a long break, but that was because we had some schools that had different fall breaks, so we have to work around uh, that. Yeah. But then October. 14th, I believe it's a Monday, is our first OSSAA competition. So we have what's called a district seating tournament. And um, I, I haven't found out yet where we will play. Last year, we've hosted the last two years, and I have a feeling we might get to do that again because the OSA coordinator for uh, academic bowl used to teach here at Choctaw oh, High School nice. with us. So because I know him, he always sticks me with a tournament, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is a little stressful because then I have yeah, to yeah, find people to it. read. Yep. I can't read at an OSSAA event. It's not allowed. So I have to find people who are willing to come and read for me and, right. and be my officials. And, and that gets a little dicey right. sometimes. Okay. So. Yeah. So th that's that's uh, one role, your coach role. Um, yes. Yeah. You're also uh, the or the blood mobile driver. I <laughs> am. I am the blood drive coordinator okay. here at Choctaw High School. So um, that's coming up next Tuesday. And yeah, right fast. now we've had a little bit of a low sign up. I've been, normally right. Choctaw High School we have a great turnout. So I'm hoping tomorrow and Monday I have a lot of kids jump on board with yeah. that. Um, uh, yeah, we've had a, a really long and very rich history with the Oklahoma Blood Institute. We actually are the school that uh, kind of they pioneered their frequent donor program for high school kids with was talked to high school uh, years ago. So, you know, I'm really proud of that. I, I helped with the blood drive when I was at high school here at Choctaw, and now I'm getting to coordinate it. So it's been kind of a, a full circle experience for me with yeah. the blood drive. Um, it's funny, though, because I I personally, myself, cannot donate blood because I lived in England for a year, so I'm on the long-term uh, deferral list for blood donation yeah. due to mad cow disease, although I tell my students it's usually from overexposure to teenagers is why I can't <laughs> donate blood. But... Um, but um, my students think it's really funny because I have a little bit of a thing about needles and I don't really like people poking me and taking stuff out. So when I've had to give blood for things, um, it has often been quite an adventure. So my students love hearing those stories and then asking me, well, why are you the blood drive coordinator? And well, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> go one with the other. It's just how things work out. Yeah. But we do. Um, my biomed seniors come and work the drive with me. So okay. I have about six seniors that are going to come and work and, and they help hold people's hands and get kids in back and forth to class. And, uh, uh you know, it's, it's a great day. The Oklahoma Blood Institute does a great job, man. And they they yeah. have their side of things down to just perfection. They get here at seven in the morning, and that place is set up and ready to go in less than an hour. And then in the afternoons, they break it down, and they're gone, and you would never know they were here, mm -hmm. taking blood all day. So they they've it down to a fine science. Well, that is good to hear. And I have been around some angry cattle, and so <laughs> you don't you really don't want to <laughs> mess with that. Um, no. So, so no, you don't. So that's. We don't want any safe, mad cows. Better safe than sorry. Yes, than absolutely. Sorry. Yeah, mad cattle, not not a fun thing. So we've had a lot of movie questions and sports questions. I think uh, in honor of our guests, we're going to have a science question. Yeah, oh, awesome. Right? Uh-oh. Inventions. 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 Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah, help me phrase it again so I okay. get it right. It is what – we'll just do with what – it. In a science fiction movie or a, any movie, yeah, a, something that they had in the past that now we really have for so real. Oh gosh! Yeah, so an you see in a sci-fi movie. Wow, that is there. And so I'll start with one of. I had a couple, but one of mine. Um, the old show. I think this was '80s television. Knight Rider. Oh yeah. Right. Knight yeah. Rider. It, had, yeah. it, it featured a Kit. 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 And yes, and it had like a little red light on the front, and it yeah, would a little Camaro. And I guess that was a sensor. Or no, it was Pontiac Fire. Yes. And so basically, what it was is a car that would respond to your voice commands, where you could tell it to do things, ask it questions, mm -hmm. and it would drive itself. And so uh, I think we're pretty much getting there. We're very, very close there. A lot of the 2019s, yes. 2020s have some capability. All of them have the capability of talking. You can talk to them, and mm -hmm. they talk you back, and they'll play your music, and they'll keep you company. And if you're sad, they won't care, but they they might talk to you. At least mm -hmm. they'll talk to you, and uh, right. your friends aren't yeah. talking to yeah, you. Yeah, they yeah, will. Yeah, the yeah. car will. 
And there's a lot of self-driving, self-stopping capabilities. So we're almost at that point where we have yep. self-driving cars. Of course, you could pick other movies that that comes from. That, that's always right. been a dream of, of I guess, the ultimate lazy uh, American <laughs> yeah. dream <laughs> is to like... Not to have to drive yourself to the yeah. grocery store. Yeah, everywhere you want to go. <laughs> so that, that's that's one. That's, that's one. a good okay. one. I, I, I'm just going to go with, with the... Uh, the Star Trek communicators. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, the flip phones. The flip phones, so the flip phones <laughs> were generated from that concept. Yes. And so that would be one. That was an excellent one. I always loved playing yeah. as, a, as a kid with the, the communicator. Beam me up, Scotty. Yes, beam me up, Scotty. Which I know. That would be another good one. That would a be. A transporter beam to yes. take you from one place to the next. I know, and I don't know how really close we are to that kind of technology. Yeah, probably not. I, I don't know. Um, one of the things that uh, we were, I was just talking, we've been studying hearing in one of my classes, and so we we did a whole thing with cochlear implants and different things, and I was showing my kids a video today, and, and we've seen many times in movies, and I can't think of one specifically because this is kind of something we see across the board in science movies, how computers have the capacity to transfer something that a human does, maybe like, I don't know, Tron, I don't know, maybe there was yeah. something like this in Tron, but something that a human does and then gets translated into something like speech. And we actually saw an invention today that two college guys just got an attend, they were recently awarded a $10,000 grant where they have these, they made these gloves and people who are deaf can wear them. And when they sign, it actually turns their sign language into audible speech. Oh, nice. It is really cool. Wow. And so, yeah, like that kind of technology that we've seen in movies where computers can transfer or translate, yeah. um, that's, I think, becoming really real. And I just think that's really cool from a, you know, a from a nerdy science teacher physician standpoint. All right. Um, all good answers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're going to... Step, step away just real second, and then we'll be back. Um, the coaches are going to come in, the football coaches. They're going to have a I – don't, I don't even know who, who's coming up, but, yes, I Coach, mean, you'll hear Coach their voices. Coach Finzer. Okay. Oh, Coach Finzer, yeah. yeah. So they're going to come in, and then uh, we'll get right back on the mics right after they're, they're there. All right, it's time again, Coach Corbett Show. Welcome. Um, looks like we're uh, another venue today. Yes, yes. You changed the name. It's actually the Coach Corbin Road Show now. Yes. Not just uh, not just a show by popular demand. We had to take it on the road. Uh, the viewers asked. We we deliver as yeah, always, yeah. and uh, so we're taking it around the country each week, different <laughs> locations uh, around the country. So <laughs> this week, obviously, welcome Mr. JJ Venzer yes, to sir. the show. Uh, officially our, uh, our running backs coach, unofficially the director of fun for the staff. It brings a lot of great energy and a lot of fun and a pleasure to have you uh, on the show. All right. So um, let's, let's, let's note where we are. This is the, uh, the cheer room. Where are we? It's a little bigger than the palm room, so we emptied it up to the cheer room mm -hmm. today. So okay. that's where we're staying. Yeah, we, we, we are, we're, in, palm. we're in the most spirited, spirited room in the school yes. right here. So yes! <laughs> They're ready. I think they're ready to fire it up the, for yeah, the game these, tonight. These ladies do a great job every single week, week in and week out, and you know, and, and their their entire you know what what they do is 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 just is selfless and, and try to continue to cheer other people on, and they bring energy every single night for multiple sports uh, and do a fantastic job and work extremely extremely hard each week. They so. said they're going to bring the juice tonight. They do every yep. week. Oh, they yeah. do every hey, week. We so I have no coach, doubt. I have no doubt about I, it. I got a little message here, and, and I'm going to have to step out. Okay. So I think I got my replacement ready. Sure. He was on standby, but now. He's ready to take over. Yeah, so let's your, bring him your, out. Let's bring your, him out. Get your intern. Yeah, let's go. All right. How was homecoming? Home, homecoming last week uh, was, was great. Uh, the, the school is a great event. If you've never been to the Choctaw homecoming, you're missing out. Uh, you know, we have, we have parades. We have bonfires. We have assemblies. We have just the entire community, you know, from Little League on up, the elementary schools on up. Everybody's involved in it. Uh, and it's really, really a fun event. Oh, yeah. uh, I thought it was fantastic. thought it went extremely well. Yes. Um, couldn't say enough good stuff about, about the parade, just the events, all those kind of things. What's kind of your favorite thing about homecoming in Choctaw, maybe compared to some other places? I just think the, the community involvement is huge. Yep. Um, we had a little change this year on the route, but we still had a bunch of support on the oh, streets. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just love it. Absolutely. The weather was great. Yes, you can. You, know, and you, you never know in, in fall weather in Oklahoma what oh, the weather's yeah. going to be like, uh, but we couldn't ask for better weather. It was, it was beautiful and sunny, and, uh, you know, kids got a lot of candy, and it's a lot oh, of yeah. fun. 
Uh, going back to the to the game last week, uh, you know, your, your Jackets played a really, really tough opponent with PC North. We did uh, really, really proud of our kids and, and our coaches. The coaching staff did a fantastic job uh, preparing our kids. The kids executed really, really well. Um, effort was fantastic yep. last week. Uh, things that, you know, obviously that we're trying to improve upon is, oh, yeah. you know, is, is getting a young team to not commit as many penalties um, and just play within themselves sometimes. Yep. Um, like you said, if we just limit a couple of the mistakes, I think we're going to go up. Um, Dylan Ward had his first touchdown last yeah, week, which yeah, was huge. Which is huge. Shout out to OG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deshaun Moore did well, had some strong runs. Uh, C.J. Smith came in and got some carries, I thought, Another did really well. Chase Jackson, over 100 yards receiving, yep, yep, was saw huge. All night. Um, Kate Sanford had his catch, Gabe Johnson. All those guys are getting better and better, and our offense has just taken off. Absolutely. I think our offense does a fantastic job of spreading the ball around. Yes. Um, you know, some nights it's not uncommon for our offense, as you know, for nine to ten guys to have a reception, you know, on a given night, which is kind of unique, um, you know, for football. Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, and we're going to also preview. We have a couple games this week. Obviously, uh, Choctaw Varsity uh, is, is going to play Dell City at home on Friday. Um, and we also have uh, Choctaw INFC with a lot of different games going on as well, uh, including first grade playing a big UConn game on oh, Saturday yeah. at 9 a.m. Case, what, what are you kind of looking forward to in playing the football game on Saturday? Winning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What Have we lost yet? No. No, no. And we, we lost, and I think we've the, the INFC first grade has outscored opponents as something like 178 to 7 or something. That's pretty and impressive. So, and they beat Broken Arrow and, and Glenpool and, um, and, and Owasso and some other big powers, and they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, what, what is your favorite thing about football? Um, tackling. <laughs> you, you like to hit people? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, anything that you want to say to your buddies? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we're going to turn it back over to our host. I appreciate you, Mr. Kaysen. You're the man. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to turn it back over to Mr. Adam Bass. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. I caught my second wind. All right. <laughs> uh, so, we're talking uh, tonight's game. Yes. Dell City coming. Yes. Yeah, Dell so City. District uh, plays. Absolutely. And you tell our kids, you know, whether you're 3-0, and 0-3, or a mixture of in-between and non-district play, for, the, for your viewers and listeners that don't know, you know, district is what is what our implications for playoffs are decided by. Right. Um, and so it's not to say the first three games don't matter, but for long term, as far as seeding in the playoffs, they, they really don't. You yep. know, the whole, the whole purpose is you're trying to continue to improve. Uh, obviously, you want to win every game. Um, but these are the games that count and the games that matter um, to get into the playoffs. And obviously, the more games you win in district, you know, the, the better your seed's going to be, which in turn should improve your chances of continuing on, you know, into the playoffs right, right. and the ultimate goal of winning the state title. And so district play starts tonight, as, as, as you mentioned, against a really tough Dell City yes. team, uh, very athletic, very well coached. Um, you know, you can tell just great kids that work extremely hard. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're in the same boat that we are. You know, they're coming into the game two and one, looking for a win. Yep. Um, you know, and everybody knows, uh, you know, the, how meaningful this game is tonight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I don't know, there may be a little sound croaking through, but downstairs is a freshman volleyball tournament going yes. on. So if you're hearing yeah. some whistles and some yelling, that's what – where that it's probably very faint if you can pick it up, but that's what uh, that sound is down there. But which on a you know different topic is that you know Choctaw is such a hub for just hosting tournaments and yeah. you know and, and from all over from from youth leagues yeah. all the way up to high school and almost all sports. There's always something going on here because of our great right. facilities yes, that we're fortunate awesome. enough to have. Right, right, yeah. So um, our question of the day because we had Miss Sindall in a little bit earlier, so we were talking science. Okay. So we yeah. went with invention. You, you may have lost me yeah. already, but okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how I was in science class. <laughs> uh, but we still, we were talking inventions. Um, so so our, our question was, what were some inventions that you saw maybe from a movie that now became real that has uh, been an impact on you? So for me, uh, just for, for fun, that uh, I grew up with some Star Trek reruns and I, I, the flip communicator was then became the flip phone. So once okay. I had my flip yeah. phone when I was a little bit younger. Right. Uh, it reminded me of Star Trek, beat me up, Scotty, you know. So yeah. is there one that, that maybe uh, 
Yeah, yeah, there there is. You know, to to me, I'm I'm really interested in 3D printing. I think is really cool. You know, oh, yeah. and uh, and I know that like you know it, it's been around for a while. It hasn't quite taken off like you know maybe it will in the future. But you yeah. know, watching the first Jurassic Park, uh, oh, yeah. the 1991 version, where you know they they actually kind of previewed that and they had right. the, I don't know if you remember, but it was a scene where they had like a, I think they're they're digging for you know Velociraptor or something, and they right. and they yep. just 3D yep. print its vocal resonator or something. <laughs> you know, at the just right on site, and then the guy plays it. You know, and I was like. You know, at the time, you're like, no way, you know, and like yeah. now that could actually legit happen, yeah. right. you know, and you could do that. And that's just, you know, mind boggling to me that, you know, someday, you know, the microwave may be where, you know, you hit a button and actually 3D print the food that you want, not necessarily just heat it up, yeah. you know, yeah. and we're really not that far away from being able to do that. And I think that that's really, really neat. Nice. JJ? I would say it's not invented yet, but I'm praying. Uh, I'm a huge Back to the Future guy. <laughs> Love the DeLorean. Yeah. Flying cars, yeah. time machines. Yeah. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping. I know I've researched. They're trying to have a hovering car. No, be so yeah. They're, no, they're no, trying to really get sweet. that in the process, which yeah. I think would be amazing I'll, I'll tell in you, our lifetime. You know, you, you, obviously we, we deal with high school kids, all of us. And, you know, when you're, I remember being a high school kid and you're like, man, I can't wait to drive, can't wait to drive. And then obviously as you get to be an adult, you know, you're like, you're like, uh, can someone else drive? You know, yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I'm just, if, if they just get just total autopilot, and yeah, I know that we're yeah, really that's, close that's to that Crowder, right now, Mr. and that's going, that was Mr. Crowder. Yeah, I know that's car. going on right now, yeah. but it's yeah. like, I'd be A-okay with that, right, just, yeah, uh, right. you know, so you could do some other things, multitask and all that, and uh, and just have your car go where you want yeah, it to go. Yeah, Tesla's and, working on that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know we're close to that. Technology. It's really, really neat. When you mentioned the flip phone, going back to yours with Star Trek, uh, you know, sometimes I wish I still had a flip phone, you know, yes. instead, of, instead of having it. You know, it's great to have to be able to do all the things that a phone can do, but sometimes you wish that you're just yeah. like, oh, you can't check email, you can't check, right, you know, right. uh, anything on, on it, and you can't get texts and social media and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so it's every about every month I'm like, maybe I just need to go yeah. back to an old razor. You know? <laughs> right. Life right. was more simple. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. I think that'll do it for now. Um, We'll see you tonight, yeah. and we'll see you at the game. Absolutely. Look forward to next week. We'll be going on the road again. Where will we appear? Nobody knows. I <laughs> uh, hope to see everyone tonight. Forecast is for no rain tonight. Should nice, be beautiful nice. weather. It's supposed to be 85 by oh, kickoff, yeah. around 80, uh, you know, halfway through at, by halftime. 78, 80 should be perfect weather. Let's pack out Bill Jensen. Let's go, Jackets. Okay, we're back. All right, it's good to be back. Uh, of course, we heard from uh, the coaches just then, and that was, uh, it was great. Um, I stepped out of the room, so I didn't hear a word they said. I'm sure it was very interesting. <laughs> no, I've had to, I, I heard it. All right. Anyway, anyways, um, fine arts. Um, well, we had a big rain issue last time, so we didn't right. get to see we the band. So hopefully tonight we will uh, <clears throat> highlight the band at, at halftime. Right. Um, yep. And I know they were working on more of the show, so we'll see if they got all of it done or – Four out of five, something like that. Right, exactly. And I know um, choir is gearing up for competition. They've been going to do some work. Uh, they got that coming up in a concert in October, uh, like right before fall break. They got that okay. that coming up. It's coming and up. Then, uh, I know band. I want to say on the twelfth is competing at Tulsa Union, so those contests are up and running. Um, obviously, uh, this weekend. Drama does an IE, IE uh, competition as well. So uh, individual events? Individual events, okay. which normally this early, she's Miss Burton's mostly focused on the one act, but she wants to get a leg up on that part of the program and start some early competitions and get things going there as well. So kind of multitasking for, for the kids in that part. But that's pretty much uh, what I know what's going on right now. All right. That sounds good. Um, as far as our tailgating segment, you know, last week was great. I had some Indian tacos from the drama program. Yep. I yep. enjoyed that. Uh, I had some other snacks and doodads. <laughs> and good. They, were, they were cooking hamburgers out there, and it smelled yeah. delicious. We're at another home game, um, and so we're really not going to focus too much on, on – we've done a lot of home games. We're not going to focus too much on the food section. But we are going to introduce a new segment, and Mr. Johnson uh, is going to come in – in just a little bit, and we're going to talk about this new segment. And I'm going to set it up a little bit. So we've made a bracket, okay, mm -hmm. kind of like a, a a playoff bracket, playoff bracket, but not for the actual football teams, for the mascots themselves. So right. we're gonna we're gonna do this, and we're gonna break it down in just a second. Um, we're gonna break it down based on uh, on the uh, the mascots themselves, 
and and they, who would win in a battle and discuss it. Yeah, who yeah, would win yeah, in, yeah. in a battle and and uh, that's going to be interesting. <clears throat> We're going to do that just after we kind of break down the playoff picture for the football team, which I, I don't think we've we've done. No, we have not. Um, you know, of course, the coaches show he's he's gonna he, he's not going to break down the playoff battle. He's going to talk no, about no. his program. One want to know each week. That's their theme. Want to know? Want to know? Right, and that's that's what they need to be. Right, you know, can't remember yesterday. Got to look forward to tomorrow because it doesn't really matter. No, um, no, it's it's everybody kind of starts over now. It's zero zero. Right, um, and ultimately you want to be winning in the last game of the season. Exactly. So, what it's looking like right here, um, this Dell City game is huge, but we're yes. also looking at Midwest City. They might be having a down year this year and we'll, we'll find out yes. because we need to beat we need to beat Dell City or Stillwater or Lawton or Midwest City because those four were the playoff teams last year right right, right. And, and so then, then you throw in Deer Creek they're two and one as well well yes Deer Creek is with, definitely improved with us where they're trying to find that playoff spot so we yeah. we do have that so this Dell City game is going to tell us a lot about what we can do is it a must win no um, is it a like we would like to win? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes, but we're also looking at games. Uh, I believe Midwest City is playing at Lawton. Yes, they traveled to Lawton, to so that's going to tell us a lot about that. Yes, yes. Um, um, Deer Creek is traveling to Stillwater, and Stillwater is ranked two. They're really good, just behind Bigsby. Yeah, both of them are blowing everybody out. They're just yeah. So that's we're ranked actually sixth. Uh, sixth in the state. Sixth in the state. So we're actually yep. right now picked to be in the playoffs. At the, uh, I believe, the third seed? Yeah, that could be very well be um, it. Because they got Dell City picked fifth in the state, and they're picked to be the second seed. Uh, of course, Stillwater with the um, first seed, and they're picking Lawton to have the fourth seed on our side. So that's really kind of where we're at with the playoff hunt. We're in really, really good shape. Although, that being said, we're zero – out zero of zero, zero. Yeah, 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 in yeah. district, but just looking at how teams have been playing. Uh, yeah, put, the Putnam Cities are battling out over Put Putnam City West and Putnam City. Who's going to be the second best Putnam City team? Yeah, who's the best second Putnam City team? Um, so, and I think we covered everybody. Dale City's coming to us, so I think that covers everybody in our di in our little district there. So, and, and we'll we'll keep an eye on those scores for you and report them next week and see how things shake up and and uh, plan out for the as the weeks progress all right that, that sounds like a good thing that will sum up and just in time i see uh mr johnson in holding his bracket we are going to put this bracket out on uh twitter so you can see it um hopefully if we have time it will be on the youtube yeah we'll put it up on the YouTube. we'll try to put it on the youtube so you can see what bracket we'll look at um, but he's coming in all right here are we, we are, we're Mr. Ready. Johnson. Thank you for coming back. I'm sorry we had to shoot you away. We only have so yeah, many you microphones. Yeah, uh, Coach Corbin's son was our special guest today for the coaches show. I did. Yeah, you oh, saw man, that. I got to live up to that. <laughs> That's good. So we we had this. We got this all explained, right? So what we're going to start with, and on the Twitter, we're going to put out our actual uh, bracket here. So we'll have a bracket. So we're going to just start. We can't do it all because no. that would be too long of a show. We're going to just do like for us the left side. We're going to do for the left side, yeah, and so we're, we're going to start with the first group of four right now. So the first group of four would be the Putnam City Pirates versus PC mm. West Pirates. Oh. Patriots. 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 Yeah. The Patriots. And then the so Ponca City Wildcats versus the Shawnee Wolves. Ooh, so we've got a big man time on battles. man, and then we've got a beast on beast. Yeah, this is, okay. a, this is big. So let's go with good. competition. Start with the – and this uh, – Putnam City and PC West are actually playing in football tonight. Tonight, but, tonight. tonight, yeah, tonight. Hmm. But that has no effect on which uh, mascot, mascot is right. better. Okay. So, All right. the Pirates and the Patriots, both people, both depicted having musket-like weaponry. Yep. Yes, that's um, a big with deal. Some cannons, cannons, with some cannons. Absolutely. Hmm. Are, they, the are the Patriots and the Pirates playing on water? Ooh, that, that could, could be, be a big, big fa factor. So, factor. <laughs> yeah, like if it's a rain game, it would favor the the, the pirates. pirates. They're yeah, much yeah. more acclimated to it's rainy weather. Although I do, what I do know about pirates, if the pirates are on the good team or on your side, they don't call them pirates; they call it privateers. 
Oh. Are they as tough? I feel like a privateer is uh, not as tough as a pirate. Yeah, as a pirate. Yeah. That is, that is a and, tough call. And, and, you know, the Patriots, they're fighting for their civil liberties. They've got a cause. they got a cause. And the Pirates are just fighting for, for money. money. For money. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. for treasure. So, yeah, if the Pirates don't get up quick, if the then the, the Patriots are going to be there for the long haul, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it doesn't I, matter. Patriots are there to the end. I'm going to throw out a, a side that I'm leaning towards, and that's going to be the Pirates. Because I think uh, that they've I, lived a life, a tough life. Yeah, I, I think, think they've fight lived dirty a life. They're gonna play dirty. They'll they'll do whatever it takes. Yeah, they don't care. They'll call on Davy Jones if they have to. Ooh, Davy Jones locker. That's Davy <laughs> Jones. Well, and I'm I'm thinking the scurvy angle. Ooh. Like pirates know how to deal with scurvy. Can they give scurvy to a patriot? I think it's game over. I think it's yeah. It's, well, I don't think patriots either one don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I I would probably vote to go ahead and move the Pirates along. I'm, I'm, base. I'm down with that. I like the Pirates here. And I'm going to say the scurvy base. angle is the Pirates are better at dealing with scurvy than it's the Patriots. So got more nasty. Yeah. yeah. Plus, need, there's a. Do I need to write that in? You mean write that in? Pencil we, them in. We pencil them in. Pen them in. Pencil, pen pencil them in. in. Yep. Sorry, Patriots. You're better mentally than physically. All right. Pirates the next advanced. thing we have to deal with is the Ponca City. Wildcats and the Shawnee Wolves. Yes, that's okay, the beasts of battle. Okay, the Wildcats. I'm, I'm assuming. How big is a Wildcat? Is it like a medium-sized dog or a little medium bit bigger? Medium-sized dog. Well, bigger. Are we? T- what are we talking here? Is it a cougar? Oh, cougar. Yeah, cougar. No, I don't think it's a cougar. No. What kind the of cat is the Wildcat? Like a Bobcat type size. That's what I think. So a Bobcat type size. Yeah. Versus some wolves. A wolf's a good size animal. Yeah. Well, wolves never fight by themselves. They're in a pack. No. If they are, they're, they're struggling. And cats sometimes are loners. Right. That's yeah, a but good they're, point. Also, they're also jerks. They're yeah. jerks. They can climb so, trees. So the wolf might just be minding its own tree angle. Yeah. Might be minding his own business, and then, you know, the cat would just like cat. start. So uh, clearly, the uh, Ponca City Wildcat started this battle. They probably did. Yes. They're probably trying to sneak around or uh, something. I'm still going with the wolves. You're going with the wolves? I'm going with the wolf pack. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough one. I think that the Wildcats might have a, a uh, flexibility advantage. Oh, wait. They got nine lives. Oh. <laughs> so they just got to win one out of nine. <laughs> exactly. Ouch. <laughs> wow. I just thought of that. That's. I think I'm going to have to go with Wildcats. I think. So, yeah, I think that's the. That's I think won me over. I think they're scrappy. I think without the nine lives things, I probably would have gone with the wolves, but mm-hmm. the fact that they do indeed have nine, nine lives. lives and the ability to attack from high up. Yeah. Yeah. They can multi-angle it. Yeah, they just jump on that back and claw They're up. not letting go. No. All right. All right okay. Of course, if on, uh, on the Twitter, CHS Jacket Guys, if you want to – we'll probably put this uh, a poll out. If you want to answer it, poll, disagree with us, fine. Yeah. You know, We'll override our bets. We're going to move to the bottom half, or are we going to save that for the next time? No, I think we're going to move to the bottom half. Okay, let's keep let's going. We're let's, doing well. So, in this group of four, we got the Sand Springs Sandites, the Deer Creek Antlers. Yes. The Choctaw Yellow Jackets versus Bartlesville Bruins. Mm. So, Sand Spring Sandites. Sandite technically is what a is it? person that lives in Sand Springs. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Although I heard that it also is an irritating um, insect or I've arachnid that, too, that like lives in the sand and basically gets under your skin and causes you to itch. It's really annoying. Mm-hmm. Which are we going to go with? Do we need to establish that? I don't know. Well, if you look at the website mascot from their school, okay. it's the man. It's the man. It's and the man. he's got a rifle. Oh, so that's the so that's he's like a pioneer point. kind of dude. Yes, he's more like a okay. pioneer. So, so this is a little sneak peek into Stillwater later Duke Creek too. Antlers, antlers. Yeah. An antler so. is an inanimate object. Okay, because it's no longer living, right? An antler is a dead thing. It's, well, just, it's just part that. of a deer, right? It's not part of a deer. deer, but it falls off later, right? They're not the deer. They're just they're the, the antler, antler portion. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting decision there on the part of the Deer Creekers <laughs> up there. Because it's an yeah. easy decision, man with rifle right. versus a deer. Deer versus a. But we're talking about which is an antler. antlers. So it's just you put it up on the wall, you're done. Like guys do that. I'm sure oh, plenty of sandites they're... have antlers on their wall. Well, yeah. and many people do have like this impressive, you know, thirty point buck or something like yeah. that that they mount on the wall. They pass away and they leave that antler 
to their sibling, their, their kids. Yes. So, like, the antler actually outlives the man. Wait a oh. minute. So it's it's almost. Are you starting to lean towards the antler as being a, a I, long It's it's almost course, like uh, you going the if you're a big course. zombie fan, we talked about zombies in a previous. It's sure. almost like there. It's an undead mascot here because it cannot be killed. Well, what if the sandite um, buries it? I mean, it's the burying eventually erosion would unmask this antler. You think so? You don't think it'll dissolve? I, I don't. Uh, that might be I an experiment. <laughs> I'm going to look. How towards, biodegradable is an antler? antler is I'm going. Like. Yeah, World War Z with the antlers. You are. I'm going to cast my vote towards the sandite. I'm sticking with the sandite. Okay. I'm going to say the sandite. All right. Well, we'll put, put down the sandites, but okay. I think you're you're missing on the undead approach of the, of the antler. <laughs> we have had some mysticism already coming through with the wildcat winning, but That's right. yeah, and the scurvy. Scurvy's <laughs> not mysticism. That is fact. Uh, I'm saying they could I give mean, them scurvy. I, I eat my pineapple. I eat my pineapple weekly right. to avoid the scurvy. <laughs> and if you're not eating pineapple, you're gonna get the scurvy. Yeah, yeah not, not and around it's, here. It is not okay. Tip from the jacket guy. Yeah. So Choctaw Yellow Jackets. Bartlesville Bruins. Bruins. So you know what the Bruins Bru- are. What Bruins, is Bruins a bear. Bruins are the bear. Okay, I don't know bear. what type of bear. Sounds like an Irish bear or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not a black bear. <laughs> Irish it bear. It kind of looks like the size of a black bear. It's one of the smaller okay. bears. Okay, one of the smaller bears. Yeah. So bears are naturally tough tough beasts. Yeah. Tough beasts. But we're talking a swarm of yellow jackets. Swarm of yellow jackets. Plural. Plural. Yes. Or are we talking about our mascot, which is Charlie, which is – a huge yellow jacket. Like, where are we going with this? With a sting that is proportionally big. Oh, a giant stinger. Well, are we going with, like, the Charlie? Or are we going with the – I mean, a there's two ways to look ju- at it. I'm looking at this. this. A swarm I mean, of actual that, living you, yellow jackets. you got to go back up to these other ones and, you know, what is an ant- what is the Deer Creek antler's mascot? That's true. That's well, a good point. I went with the zombie <laughs> antler. <laughs> I'll throw out there, too. I, I might lean towards the, the – natural yellow jacket because s- small size can be an advantage. Oh, yeah. That I mean, we learned this, learn this in uh, Ant-Man. He He'd just be swinging and yeah. not hitting a thing. Because even a small bear could kill all kinds of things. Like, sure, you don't want to mess with a bear, but a swarm of, you know, let's call it 50 yellow jackets. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that the bear could do anything to it. I think the bear would run. Right. Yeah. Go hide. Jump Quit. in. A Maybe river. get two or three of them. Swat. 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 But yeah, that's not enough to thousands and thousands of sting from a carnivorous insect that just yes. A yellow yeah, they jackets. They're not very. They're not very nice in nature. I'm, I'm a, no, they no. don't want to be bothered. They will come and get you. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna I think mark we down. moved on the yellow jackets okay. clearly. So what we have here is we got. The Pirates versus the Wildcats. The Sandites versus the Yellow Jackets. Moving on to the next round. Yep. So um, next week we'll talk about those. Next week we're going to talk about the east side of our bracket, and you should be able to see it on the CHS Jacket guys' Twitter. And uh, we'll continue this, and we'll end up with the champion. Awesome. Um, and we're not going to homer this. So just because we are Yellow Jackets doesn't mean they're going to win. We're right. going to have to logic this out. But we'll put a vote and see if we need to change one of our categories out there. On the Twitters. And so I guess that wraps up our entire show. And so thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you all. That was fun. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Of course. And until next time, stay classy.